In this PBD podcast, guest Michael Malice is introduced as an author and anarchist who initially discussed his sleep pattern and pronouns on the Patrick Bet David podcast. He also joked about Canadians not apologizing and Quebecois being recycled French. The guests discussed the importance of sleep, anarchism, antinomianism, anarcho-pacifism and the best way to make decisions. Michael explained that anarchism is the understanding that political authority is illegitimate and morality is independent of the government. He further explained that morality is something everyone has to face daily and corporate press often tries to make things seem morally ambiguous. They concluded with the idea that the best way to make decisions is for people to come together and decide what is best for their community and country. Patrick Bed David and his guests discussed the concept of anarchism. They explained that it is a relationship between two entities that is free of any higher authority and provide examples such as department stores and white parties to illustrate this concept. They compare anarchism to a relationship with God, noting that it is not a religion, but rather a relationship. They discuss the potential benefits of anarchism, such as the ability to create beautiful works of art without the need for a government to regulate it, and the potential for small groups of people to live in harmony without government, laws, or police. They also emphasize the need to be prepared for the future, and suggest investing in gold as a way to protect against the market crash. They also discuss how some primitive societies have grown a hierarchical structure without any outside influence, and how this is not an anarchist group. They then move on to the topic of defunding the police, with Michael Malice advocating for police abolition and the free market providing security instead. Finally, they discuss how the best way to have order between any kind of people or organizations is to have it be voluntary and agreed upon, and that a government monopoly on security will lead to strife and violence. Patrick Bed David and his guests discussed the limited options available to conservatives when it comes to voting. They also discussed the idea of the Overton window, which is the range of ideas that are considered acceptable in public discourse. They then discuss how the internet has changed the way people can spread their ideas, allowing for more radical and unpopular ideas to be heard. Finally, they discuss how Noam Chomsky has said that the way to control a society is to have strictly delineated terms of argument, but have vigorous debate between those terms. In this portion, they talk about the current situation in Ukraine. Michael Malice, who was born in Ukraine, expresses his concern that the people of Ukraine will pay the price if a settlement is not reached. He compares the situation to the Korean War, where the Korean Peninsula was leveled and the devastation for the people was enormous. Adam Sosnick and Tom Ellsworth discuss the difficulty of finding a solution that does not validate Putin's aggression, while Michael Malice expresses his lack of opinion on the matter due to his lack of knowledge. In this section of the PBD podcast, they discuss the importance of individual freedom and alternative forms of social organization. They also discuss the concept of anarchy, which is not synonymous with chaos or lawlessness. The guests then debate whether there is a country that is closest to implementing any of these anarchical types of philosophies. Tom Ellsworth then provides an update on what is going on with Silicon Valley and Credit Suisse, and presents a chart that assesses the balance sheet risk of the banks. The chart shows that Credit Suisse is in trouble. The podcast switches to the potential risks of the government bailing out Silicon Valley Bank, the potential for a run on banks, Bitcoin, and the proposed reparations package in San Francisco. They mention the overnight realization that there is a lot of risk at a lot of banks, with First Republic being downgraded and given the rating of junk by Moody's. They also discuss the poll on Twitter asking what the Fed will do in the face of the SVB collapse, with 41% of the 326 votes saying a quarter point and 32% saying a half point. They discuss the potential for regulation of the crypto community, and the potential for Peter Schiff to say, I told you so, if gold prices increase. Lastly, they mention the proposed reparations package in San Francisco, which would provide a lump sum payment of $5 million to eligible black residents, eliminate personal debt and tax burdens, and provide a guaranteed annual income of $97,000 for 250 years. The state of California is also considering its own reparations proposal, which would cut 360,000 checks for every eligible black citizen. They move on to the CNN poll that shows that only 30% of Republicans and Republican-leaning independents believe that the country's best days are still ahead of it. The poll also shows that 38 of Republicans view increasing racial, ethnic, and national diversity as a threat, and 78 believe that society's values on sexual orientation and gender identity are changing for the worse. The guests then discuss the possibility of former President Donald Trump running for the 2024 GOP nomination, and they agree that he does not have a good chance of winning due to his staffing decisions and the incentives for Democratic Party operatives to push him as far as they can. The discussion switches to the implications of Donald Trump's involvement in the PAC conference and the potential difficulties he may face in fundraising. 
They then move on to discuss a Bloomberg story about Trump's social media platform, True Social, which has laid off half a dozen people, including its chief technology officer. They suggest that Trump should use his presence on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to drive traffic to True Social and increase its value for shareholders, employees, and investors. They also talk about the potential impact of the closure of Trump's social media platform, True Social, on his campaign. They agree that it will be a problem in the short term, but could help his campaign in the long term. They also discuss the need for Trump to take a different approach as the favorite in the election, rather than the underdog approach he used in 2015. Finally, they joke about Patrick needing a twin mattress for his guest room and making it haunted. They move on to discussing the idea of America leading the world and standing for something. They debate the idea of sending troops to protect democracy, and the cost of doing so. They agree that America should stand for something, but that there is a limit to the resources they can commit to this cause. They also agree that speeches and soft power are a good way to stand for what they believe in without having to send troops. In this portion, they discuss the political agenda of Florida Governor DeSantis and the risks politicians must take to create momentum. They discuss DeSantis' stance on the transgender issue and how it is being portrayed in the corporate press. They also discuss the risks taken by Nikki Haley, Marco Rubio and Liz Cheney, with the latter taking the biggest risk by turning against the January 6th insurrection. The guests agree that DeSantis is taking the right risks and that politicians must take risks in order to create momentum. At the end, Patrick Bed David and his guests Michael Malice, Adam Sosnick and Tom Ellsworth talk about the potential of recruiting a talented individual to save a company. They use the example of Steve Jobs and Apple, which was founded in 1976 and was on the brink of failure until Jobs was brought back and the company took off. They then discuss the current situation with TikTok and the potential of it being bought by Elon Musk, who has the power and influence to make it successful. Vivek Ramaswamy is also mentioned, who has proposed to expose FBI files if he is elected. The guests conclude that it is important to find the right person to save a company, as Steve Jobs did for Apple. Check out the full podcast by clicking the link in the description below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for listening to this podcast summary episode of The Pod Slice.